Hello, welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about the selection uh, menu and it's important to know it because that's how uh, we can make uh, new brushes and um, make masks and things like that to help with the various things that we're doing. I obviously have trouble with words today so please bear with me. Alright, up here on the top we have the selection menu. Um, I think in some of the earlier versions it uh, was called the alpha menu but it was changed to selection to make it clear that it's a little bit different from the alpha and some of the other programs. So you have, as we've covered before, sele clear selection, select all, um, including Gaussian blurs and filters, shrinks, transforms, and uh, on down to painting on the selection, uh, pre-multiply correction and uh, various effects such as glow, drop shadow, and emboss by selection. The other way to uh, access this is through the um, toolbar. You have the square um, selection, the circle selection, lasso, and the magic wand. If you right click on these, it will bring up that uh, many of the same things that are over in the selection channel. There's a few things that are are different, but this covers the main ones. There's your paint on alpha, pre-multiply, your grow, your drop shadow, your emboss. You can uh, move an alpha selection around a little bit. You can flip it uh, horizontally, flip it vertically. Um, you can choose replace, which is what the default is, so that each time you draw on the alpha channel, like so, it will replace with your new selection. Or you can have it do add, so that it will add in each of those pieces or subtract so you can take pieces back out again. Um, you can also use the shift key and hold down the uh, shift key while you're making um, your selections and left mouse uh, will add, a add to the selection and right mouse will subtract to the selection. So that's how um, that works. Clear the alpha. Um, and that allows us to make selections that we can then um, use further on in, in our brushes. So for example, if I wanted to select this blue planet here, I could go in, make a selection there that's general. As you notice, it doesn't quite match all the way around. So now I can use my little uh, finger here and m nudge it slowly into place so that I've got a good selection. At this point, now that I have that selected, I can go to brush menu and use selected as brush. You can use the keyboard um, shortcut control B. So now if I use this as a brush, I've just made myself a custom brush. Um, as you'll notice, it's teeny teeny tiny. That's because my size, my opacity, and steps are all affected by that. So I can either clear the settings using this or if I just want it to be a little bit bigger and you know not fully opaque I can adjust it there if I want to stamp it down if you just stamp you'll notice it doesn't do anything right here the steps you have to put them down to zero and that allows me to put a new little moon there I can then use the other uh, brush um, menu options so that I could um, rotate it and so now I'm, there's my little rotated one um, you can flip it not that it looks a whole lot different when it's you know flipped here you can see the shadow uh, and uh, resample it say I want it to be a whole lot bigger and so now we have a giant one. If I would like to make it seamless, which of course doesn't work as well on a circle as it would if I was using a uh, a square, you can you know set your trim however you want it there. Um, you can use the image to do your seamless, or you can use the brush. Um, you can have it keep the original size so that once it finishes it'll um, expand it back to this size and you now have a brush which is tiled. So I could put those right next to each other 
and it would be seamless. So that's how you can make a, a seamless uh, brush for putting textures in and, and things like that. So we'll go backwards here, get rid of some of these. Um, another thing with the selections, um, this alpha option doesn't have as many of the uh, options as the selection bar does insofar as viewing your selections. So let's say we'll take our lasso here, we're going to you know, lasso this moon and that moon and a little piece of things and we've got this crazy little selection going here. In the selection menu it has show marching ants. I can turn the marching ants off if I find them to be really annoying. That's also over on the uh, the side one. And then there's what's called overlay. And the overlay puts a nice bright pink overlay any place that's not selected. This is really good if you're selecting really small areas and uh, you can't get in close to um, see exactly where you're going. You can then go in and you know make further selections with the overlay turned on we can then add to our selection and it clears out the uh, piece or subtract taking that back out again if we have it in replace mode we can then use the shift key to add a piece and then the right mouse button with a shift key to subtract a little piece. Um, if you have the buttons clicked here you can't use the shift key to alter it so it has to be on replace in order to do the alterations. <coughs> um, if I cleared the alpha notice all of the pink overlay is gone as well. and That can be turned off and on. <coughs> here in this in the selection menu. You can also select um, by the shadows and that will automatically select all the darkest areas within here. Um, you could then store that as a mask right up here that automatically stores the selection and so now I have this you know really cool uh, looking alpha mask there. Um, you can then select by the uh, lights and then you know, do the same thing there's my mask for that so then if I wanted to then go in and you know change those colors I would have that as you notice there's also the uh, select by midtone you can also select by a color key it will open up a panel here and you've got yourself a mouse you can decide how much tolerance, whether you want your uh, your difference to be by the HSV, the RGB, or a single uh, session. And so for this, I would then click on the areas I wanted to select, and so everything that has that sort of purplish color right there will then be selected. If I was to select the gold, far more of it gets selected. I can turn my tolerance up so a little bit more around the edges of that gets selected as well. You can choose it to be nonlinear or linear. So once I have that selected, I can then um, affect it in the same ways. Store an alpha and uh, and then use that. So things here that's important to know. If I clear my alpha, then I can replace it, and now I have that uh, selected again. I'm going to turn the pink overlay back on, makes it a little bit easier to see on video. So the places that uh, have been selected now um, are were uh, clear and the other areas were unselected were pink. So I could then replace that one and do some work in those areas. It allows me a lot more um, options to mask 
various things. So it's very handy. You can have these and switch back and forth between your masks uh, very easily. I replace this one. So now this is my mask. You can then directly add and subtract um, these things. So if I've got this selected and I decide that I want to subtract uh, this from it, then I would click. And now these areas have been subtracted from what was selected previously. Um, inverting can be very useful. That means that everything now is, of course, unselected that was selected and is now selected that wasn't selected. So that uh, is very useful for this. We'll clear the alpha again here so we can see. I will replace. Remember, after you do the invert, you do have to actually replace it or it doesn't work. The uh, get alpha, well, if you have one of these open and you decide you need to change it, say that uh, <coughs> I went in here and I, you know, added this particular little uh, piece to it. Oh, I'm inverted at the moment. There we go. Subtract this little piece from it. Um, I can then get the new alpha and it will show up there. So now I've altered my alpha here. Um, I can also get the full image and that will replace everything as a alpha. So black, gray, white, etc. This will uh, clear the alpha completely, undo it. If we decide, no, wait a minute, I want to go back to that this um, I may have to research I'm not exactly sure what that does and this allows you to then paint um, on the alpha in order to um, increase things so to make my selections direct directly from here um, so that's the, the main things that are here on the uh, alpha panels. Alright, so if we uh, close these down, we'll clear the alpha. And I'm going to make my um, selection here for the little blue planet again. And at this point I don't care whether or not it gets the whole thing. So there we go. I've made my selection. I can do the same thing here where I can invert it. Um, I can turn it off and on. The use of off and on allows you to have something selected, you turn it off, you can make modifications, you turn it back on and that piece is still selected. It will only store um, one alpha mask um, in this way. But that lets you, you know, see what you're doing. You can turn it off, turn it back on, to reset things. Store alpha is the same as the little convenience button up here on the top. This turns our marching ants off and on, but as you'll notice with the pink there, the alpha is still on. It just gets rid of the little annoying marching ants. Um, the uh, blur alpha lets you feather the edge. So if you blur it, you can choose your hybrid or precise and how much blur that you want on that, which then allows you, if you're going to make this into a brush, we will see that uh, where I have the, the little blue planet feathered, since we had this inverted, there's a faint blue line all the way around it, which is the where we had feathered that out. I was to uh, undo that, invert the uh, alpha, and then make my selection that way. I now have, there we are, the feathered brush. Um, it's small here, so let's go back up to 100. And.
and my computer is trying to freeze. There we go. Because the uh, entire brush, entire image was selected as a brush, that's one of the reasons it's moving around so slow. If I was to uh, use the custom keyer here, you would see that it's actually um, incredibly large, even though my edges are, have all been transparented. What not? There's ways to, to work with that as well, so that you don't get huge brushes. Um, so that's how you would um, feather that. You can uh, choose to grow an alpha by making our selection here. And I decide I want to get a little bit uh, bigger here and can grow it up to quite uh, a few pixels in size. So there it is, slightly uh, larger than it was before. You can also shrink the uh, alpha, and that brings it back down a little bit smaller. That allows you to do some fine tuning adjustment. It's great for doing text and uh, things of that nature where you need to um, make an outline around things. You can grow your alpha and then turn it back down, shrink your alpha, and do text. We'll do a project where we make um, Christmas card or birthday cards and I'll uh, use those techniques at that point. Scale the alpha then uh, allows you to change the X or the Y. It's called uh, transform selection now. So that lets us scale it, rotate it, which if we didn't have a circle would you know be much more obvious and so that's has taken our alpha and made it uh, small and then the free transform is here and that lets us you know angle things make them larger squish them so you can do a lot of things with the free transform the free transform by the way can also be um, accessed if you're doing your view and your uh, settings, you can have it um, do the free transform selections automatically on all the time. Um, so that's a, a possibility that you can use with it. So that's the transform and the free transform. The uh, adjusting your dynamic range you can flip your selection once you've made it horizontally or vertically and then paint on the selection allows us to then take whatever brush that we have and uh, actually paint directly uh, on it. We need to finish applying our transform make that go away. So you can reset your shears, flips, etc. So now I've got this. So to paint on the alpha everything that you paint in um, made my brush paint in black um, I have a small brush here so anything that I paint in black will add into the outside and anything that I paint in white will of course be removed. And since we can also paint in grayscale using the opac opacity, so as we can do other things um, as well. When I'm done with this, and uh, I turn off the paint on alpha mode active, which can also be um, accessed from the brush menu, so very useful. We close that and we're back to regular painting and you see the places that have been selected now. So I could then use um, that as a brush if I chose. Um, you've got it as a as a mask. So I could save it and 
there's my alpha the, to then use in uh, other ways. Um, the effects, these are some things that allow you to add a glow, to add a drop shadow, or to uh, emboss. So for example, we'll clear our alpha here, and we'll select our little planet. I'm going to turn off the overlay. So we have our selection here. So the effects, so the drop shadow. You can change how fuzzy, how opaque, how much it's offset, whether or not it's inverted. And when you hit OK, it takes a moment. My computer's not happy. But we now have a uh, shadow there. Hmm. A little difficult to see, I'm sure, on uh, your computer. We'll do it up here. And you can also access it right here. Add the drop shadow. And if I clear the alpha, you can see where the drop shadow um, is. I'll run this up a little bit bigger so that you can see. There we go. There's our drop shadow. Um, the glow allows you to uh, to add a glow. Again, you make your selection, and then alpha glow. You can decide how big you want it to glow out. This can also be useful for lettering or a number of other things. Whatever you have selected, the glow goes to the inside of it. So if I wanted it to glow on the outside, as you can see here, this one is uh, glowing on the inside, makes bubbles and uh, also things like the nice little um, bubbles. Uh, force fields, makes nice little force fields on the, uh, on our little colony and things here. Um, if we uh, do the invert, and we'll pick a different color here, and uh, then apply the alpha glow, and then because that's now the inside, because we've inverted it, it makes the glow on the outside. So. Um, one thing to note, if you do invert it in this way, it makes the glow wherever there's an alpha. So right here, because this outside is selected, we've got glow here. Um, one of the things you could do would be make your image, um, make a border around your image. So then when you d inverted your selection, you could grow your um, selection out this way. And then it would only be on your border, and you could cut the border off. Um, crop it later if this worries you otherwise you would ju then just cut that off work bigger than what you need when you're finished um, embossed by alpha is our uh, last one here and you can decide how smooth the default here is 12 and that tends to do a fairly good uh, job and so now we have our little uh, alpha is been embossed. So a lot of neat effects that you can do with that and as I said those are also available right here under the effects. So that's your uh, main ones that you work with here in the selection and then how you can turn it into a brush once you've uh, made your selections which can then be um, altered and whatnot. So let's do a uh, little piece of sky here we turn that into a brush up here along the top as well as the um, store alpha we have the store brush and there's our stored brush right here you can scale it and rotate it you can change the hue and um, saturation and values on it 
to then uh, allow you to uh, manipulate the brush here. You can add extra color or subtract color out. And that allows you to then paint with it in that manner. You adjust your size and your opacity and things up here. So there's my little star has been stamped now. Um, so there's a quick overview on that. Um, the last one up here stores the whole image so that you, you then have a snapshot of that image which it also has various things that you can do with it. You can center it, scale it to fit, you can um, combine it with uh, the image that's already in the buffer, you can replace the alpha, you can use the image as an alpha so you get an automatic mask that way. Um, replace the existing image that creates a new image so if you need something that's a different size you have your channels that you can you know alter and add um, you can also take an image use it as a brush which puts it back into the brush or you can use it as a brush plus the alpha so we might go into some of those things at a later date but that's just the quick overview on the the things that are here in the image another really really handy thing is if you click the little turkey baster on this image this now acts as a palette and as I select a color as you'll see that color changes over here so if I'm doing a landscape painting and I want to keep the, um, the colors within a certain uh, area so each of those that I select turns those colors very handy so I then instantly um, have a a selection so there we have the um, the alpha options as I said most of them can be added um, right here in on this or if you don't want to open the alpha selection they're all right here um, you can also select numerically if you happen to know what the exact hex color is and things like that so there we have it and I think that'll do for selections right now hope this was still informative for you um, if you have anything else that other things that you would like to sleep see please put them uh, in the comments and uh, I'll try and, and get to them uh, sooner rather than later. Alright, thanks and goodbye.